Today the topic that we are going to learn about is leukemia. Leukemia is defined as malignant disorder of hematopoietic stem cell compartment characteristically associated with increased number of white cell in the bone marrow and peripheral blood. Hematopoietic stem cells are the stem cells that give rise to other blood cells. The risk factors associated with leukemia are ionizing radiations such as radiotherapy and atomic bombing. Cytotoxic drugs that are alkylating agents and industrial exposure to benzene. Genetics which include Down syndrome. and immunological factors which includes disease that makes the patient immunocompromised, for example, hypogamma globulonemia. Moving on to the types of leukemia, there are four types of leukemia. First one is acute myeloid leukemia, which is common in males over the age of 50. Second one is acute lymphoid leukemia common in children, specifically in males. Third one is chronic myeloid leukemia common in males of middle and old age. And last one is chronic lymphocytic leukemia again common in males of old age. Now we will discuss each type of leukemia separately in detail. Let's start with acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is defined as neoplastic proliferation of blood cells derived from marrow myeloid elements. This type of leukemia progresses very rapidly and could result in death of the patient within two months if left untreated. It is most common in adults. Clinical features of acute myeloid leukemia are those associated with marrow failure such as anemia due to decreased RBC count. Patients are more prone to infections due to decreased amount of normal WBCs and bleeding due to reduced number of platelets along with that hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, gum hypertrophy and skin involvement is also seen in patient with acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is diagnosed on the basis of white blood cell count which is often increased. Blood cells are seen in peripheral blood. Multiple monoblasts are seen on bone marrow biopsy. And lastly, Oral rods, which are diagnostic of this disease. Oral rods are red staining needle like bodies seen in the cytoplasm of myeloblasts. Management of acute myeloid leukemia includes supportive therapy consisting of blood transfusion, platelet transfusion, and infection control. Secondly, chemotherapy is done in two phases. First is remission induction phase in which the following drugs such as donorobacin, citrabine, etoposide are given. Second phase is consolidation phase in which the following drugs such as citrabine, m metoxentron are given. If the patient do not respond to above mentioned therapy, then bone marrow transplant is done in such cases. The complications that can arise due to this disease are septicemia. Septicemia is a blood poisoning specially 
caused by bacteria or their toxins. Tumor Lich syndrome in which large amount of tumor cells are killed off releasing their contents into bloodstream characterized by hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia, hyperuricemia. And lastly, leukostasis in which leukemia cells accumulate and damage the microvasculature of vital organs. Second type of leukemia is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It is defined as malignancy of lymphoid cells affecting B or T lymphocyte cells lines. Arresting maturation and promoting uncontrolled proliferation of immature blast cells with marrow failure and tissue infiltration. It is the most common cancer of a childhood. CNS involvement is a characteristic feature of this type of leukemia. The clinical features associated with this type of leukemia are Marrow failure which includes the anemia, infection, bleeding, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, lymphadenopathy. CNS involvement which includes the cranial nerve palsies, meningism. Infections most commonly associated with this type of disease are those that can involve chest, mouth, and skin. Infections that can occur are bacterial septicemia, herpes zoster, measles, candidiasis, pneumocystis pneumonia. Investigations done to diagnose acute lymphoblastic leukemia are blood flame examination. Blood cells seen on blood flame and WBC count is usually high. On bone marrow examination, we can see the normal elements being replaced by blood cells. Chest X-ray and CT scan are done to suspect mediastinal and abdominal lymphadenopathy. Lumbar puncture is required to confirm CNS involvement. Management of this type of leukemia requires supportive therapy which includes blood transfusion, IV fluids, psychological support, and infection control. Infection control is very important in these type of patients as it can induce septicemia. If these type of patients have fever for more than one hour, that indicates septicemia and has to be managed accordingly. Aminoglycoside in combination with papricillin or tazobactam is indicated in these patients. For gram-positive organisms, venicomycin is indicated. If the fever persists despite antibiotics, then a fungal or viral cause is suspected. For fungal infection, fluconazole and IV amphotericin is given, whereas for viral infection, acyclovir is given. In case of pneumocystis, gerovacci infection, cotrimoxazole is drug of choice. Chemotherapy for acute lymphoblastic leukemia is done in three phases. Phase 1 is remission induction phase where following drugs such as vincristine, donorobacin, prednisolone, L-asparginase, methotrexate are given. Second phase is the consolidation phase. In this phase, donorobacin, citrabine, etoposide, methotrexate are given. Third phase is maintenance phase where prednisolone, vincristine, mercaptopurine, methotrexate are given. For CNS prophylaxis, intrathically chemotherapy is done with high dose methotrexate. When patients do not respond to chemotherapy, 
then bone marrow transplant is last option. Moving on to the third type of leukemia that is chronic myeloid leukemia. It is a myeloproliferative disorder resulting in proliferation of all hematopoietic lineages but manifesting predominantly in granulocyte series. It occurs in two three phases. First is chronic phase which is responsive to treatment and easily controlled. Then comes the accelerated phase in which the additional cytogenetic abnormalities occur and it is difficult to control. And last phase is blast crisis in which the disease transformed into acute leukemia and is not responsive to the treatment. Coming towards the clinical presentation of this disease, signs associated with chronic myeloid leukemia are splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and in case of splenic infarction, a friction rub is heard. A friction rub is a sound heard through stethoscope caused by rubbing together of two serous surfaces. Symptoms associated with these patients are tiredness, lethargy, weight loss, anorexia, breathlessness, sweating, abdominal pain, and bruising. The disease is diagnosed on the basis of the presence of following features such as high leukocyte count, increase in basophils and eosinophils, myeloid cells predominantly are neutrophils and myelocytes are seen on blood flame examination. Bone marrow biopsy is done. Chromosomal analysis shows Philadelphia chromosomes which is diagnostic of this disease. BCR ABL gene is found in RNA analysis. BCR ABL is a mutation that is found by a combination of two genes, BCR and ABL, also called fusion gene. This gene produces a type of protein called tyrosine kinase which causes leukemic cells to grow and divide out of control. The management of chronic myeloid leukemia depends on its phases. For accelerated phase, imatinib, hydroxycarbamide and low dose citrabine are given. Blast crisis is managed in the same way as acute leukemia depending on the type of blast cells. For chronic phase, imatinib is given which inhibits the BCR ABL protein that is tyrosine kinase. Moving on to the last type of leukemia that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It is defined as the leukemia in which there is accumulation of mature B-cells that have escaped programmed cell death and undergone cell cycle arrest in G0, GD phase. This type of leukemia is classified into different stages, known as rice staging. Stage 0 is characterized by lymphocytosis alone. Stage 1 consists of lymphocytosis along with lymph adenopathy. In stage 2, the patient has lymphocytosis in combination with spleno and hepatomegaly. In stage 3, patient presents with lymphocytosis and anemia. Whereas in stage 4, patient has lymphocytosis and thrombocytopenia. Clinical features associated with this disease are It has an insidious onset. Presenting problems are Anemia, infections, painless lymph adenopathy, night sweats, and weight loss. Signs of chronic lymphocytic leukemia are 
painless in large lymph nodes, hepatomegaly, and splenomegaly. Investigations done for the diagnosis of this disease are peripheral blood examination. There is increased number of lymphocytes more than 5 into 10 to power 9 per liter. Amino phenotyping is done for accurate diagnosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It is a process used to identify cells based on the type of antigens or markers on the surface of the cell. In chronic lymphocytic leukemia, monoclonal B cells expresses B cell antigens CD19 and CD23. Direct Coombs test is done confirm the presence of autoimmune hemolytic anemia which is complication of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. We can also diagnose the disease by signs of marrow infiltration such as decreased hemoglobin level, decreased neutrophil counts, decreased platelet count. Treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia depends on the symptoms. No treatment is indicated if it is asymptomatic. Treatment is given if symptoms develop. First line therapy includes fludarabine, cyclophosphamide, and rituximab is given. Along with that, steroids, supportive care, transfusions, IV aminoglobulins are given. Radiation therapy is done for lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly. Complications that can arise due to this disease are autoimmune hemolysis. It is rare type of anemia which occurs when body produces antibody that destroys red blood cells. Along with that, infection and marrow failure is also seen.